Joey Blanco with RWB Realty Group, and in today's video, we're going to talk about budgeting. Now, I know budgeting isn't an exciting topic, but it's necessary, especially if you're a first time home buyer and you've never created a budget before. And so, we're going to go over some reasons why it's important to set a budget before you even start the pre approval process for your first time purchasing a home. So let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is financial awareness. Now, I know this seems obvious. You know, you have to be financially aware, right? Well, a lot of people aren't financially aware. You know, money comes in and money goes out. But are you telling it where to go? Or are you just wondering where it went? That's, that's the important thing. And unless you're actually writing down a budget and laundry listing all of the items, all of the bills, you know, all of your uh, streaming subscriptions and your electric bill and your car payment, uh, hopefully you don't have one of those, but most people do. And laundry list all those, add them up, and then add your income in there and then find out how much money you have left over. Uh, this is important when deciding, you know, how big of a house are you going to want to buy or how big of a house can you even afford? And so I would recommend being financially aware before you even start the process. And so if you ever have any questions or need help on creating a budget, please reach out to me. I'm really geeky when it comes to the numbers and spreadsheets, and I would love to help you to create a budget to figure out uh, which is going to be step two, and that's determining affordability. Now, when we talk about determining affordability, we need to figure, we're not talking about being house poor here. We're talking about how much home can you afford responsibly. Responsibly is a pretty broad term. Some people believe that 25% of your income uh, can go to housing. And I tend to follow along that same guideline. Others say 30%. If you ask the banks, uh, I believe the banks will probably allow up to 50% of your income. And that, in my opinion, is irresponsible. But we could talk about that. Uh, we'll save that for another day. So once we determine the affordability, then we can go into the mortgage pre-approval process. And so you're going to get with your lender and there are so many lenders to choose from. If you need a lender, you reach out to me. I've got one that I've trust and that I work with and I will send you off to them and they will take care of you. And then you'll come back with your pre-approval letter. Now, let me warn you about the pre-approval letter. Like I said, the bank will allow you uh, to borrow way more than anybody can afford. Uh, their debt to income ratios are way different than what it should be, to be completely honest. And so they may say, oh, you're, you're pre-approved for $400,000. Go get yourself a $400,000 house. Well, at the end of the day, if your income doesn't support a $400,000 house, then it, it would be irresponsible for you to go out and just buy whatever the bank says that you can afford. You need to put it into your budget. So, okay, well, what's the payment on a $400,000 house? Okay, it's $3,000 a month. And I'm just guessing at what it would be. Who knows what it would be uh, given the interest rate at the time that you're purchasing a home. But let's say it is $3,000 a month. Well, if your rent is $1,000 a month, then you need to pay yourself that extra $2,000 into your savings account at least for a few months to see what it feels like. And if it feels tight, well, then you can't afford it. Now, if you want to do the quick and easy math, you could say, okay, $3,000 a month, is that a quarter of my take-home pay? And so uh, you would have to be bringing home $12,000 a month in order for that math to work out. Um, if you're only uh, bringing home $6,000 a month, well, that's not going to work out for you. 
So let's go on to step four. And step four, you've got your pre-approval in, in place. And I would say, okay, we're going to dip right into the uh, home buying process and, and give us a call at RWB Realty Group. Well, you're going to want to do what I, I, I call it step 3B. And that's make sure that whatever you determined your affordability for a house payment, it's going to blend in with your long-term goals. Okay. When I say long-term goals, I'm talking about saving for retirement. I'm talking about saving for the kids' college funds. Are you going to be able to still do those things and afford the level of the house that you're looking for? So I'm just saying, think about those things before you make, you know, that house commitment is going to be either a 15 year note or a 30 year note in most cases. And so 30 years is a long time. So you need to be thinking ahead about, you know, kids college funds, saving for retirement and make sure that you add that into the budget so that your long term financial planning is in place. Now, there's even another step before you start the home buying process, and that's emergency fund. Now, I can guarantee you that if you buy a home without an emergency fund in place, if you only got 500 bucks in the bank and you go out and you buy this $300,000 house, I can almost guarantee you that Murphy is going to move in and he will rear its ugly head the day after closing, your hot water heater is going to go out, your HVAC is going to go out, something major will go out and you're not going to be prepared for it. And so for those that don't know Murphy, I'm talking about Murphy's law, you know, that I guarantee that will happen. Now, if you're prepared for it, okay, if your hot water heater goes out, big whoop, you get another hot water heater and you move on um, because you had, you know, five 5,000, 10,000 in the bank, and it was no big deal. But if you only got 500 bucks in the bank, hot water heater is a big deal. And you don't want to be dealing with that stress right when you're trying to move into your new home. And that rolls into my next point. It, you know, reducing stress and increasing confidence. You know, if you've got an emergency fund in place and you set a budget, well, you know what? The home buying process and, and being a homeowner is going to be relatively stress free. If you haven't created a budget and you don't have an emergency fund in place, then home ownership is going to be a pretty stressful thing for you. So do yourself a favor, keep the stress levels low and create that budget and have an emergency fund before you even get started. Okay. Now we're going to go right into number seven. And number seven is really important, and that's avoid overborrowing. Now, I, I can't say this enough. Now, the first time that I purchased a home, the very first home that I purchased, I let my realtor know that my budget was absolutely no more than 130000 I did my budget and we did the practice and $130,000 was all I could afford for a house. Well, of course, the realtor and, you know, not knocking on realtors. I'm a realtor. Uh, now, I don't practice this practice, but uh, they did and it is what it is. So I told my realtor that my budget was 130 and what did they do? The very first home that we went and looked at, and this was back before uh, Zillow was big and Redfin and Trulia and all those things. Uh, really, it was up to the realtor. I told the realtor what I was looking for. They picked out the homes and we went and looked at five or six homes uh, without me even really previewing them. And so the first house we go look at asking price $180,000. Okay. And so now, of course, the homes that I could afford were at the time was around $130,000. But the first house that she takes me to is $180,000. Now, what did that do? Well, that made every house after that seem like, well, 
to put it bluntly, uh, a crappy house. I mean, I wanted the $180,000 house. Those $130,000, $120,000 houses didn't even compare to the first house that she took us to see. And so it was super tempting to just, ah, well, we'll just go get that $180,000 house. The bank would have loaned me $180,000, um, but we would have been house poor. You know, the only thing that we would have been able to afford is just paying that mortgage. We would have been able to enjoy, you know, going to the movies and uh, going out with our friends and so forth. And so you really need to think hard about overborrowing. All right. And so that leads us into the last thing. And so when you set your budget, let's say your budget is 200,000, right? Well, I would advise that you do not go look at houses that are over 200,000 because you're going to fall in love with them. They're going to have things that you the homes in your price range aren't going to have. And so uh when you have a budget of and I don't care what your price point is. If your budget's 200,000, 300,000, if your budget's a million, you know, then that's your budget. If your budget's a million dollars and you go look at a $2 million house, that house is going to have things that even the million dollar house doesn't have. So it doesn't matter what price point that you're in, but you need to prioritize your needs and wants. If your budget is 200,000 and you know, you can afford that and you really want a swimming pool and an outbuilding. Well, I could tell you in the Oklahoma City Metro for $200,000, you're not going to get a swimming pool and an outbuilding. Um, you may not get either one of those. It's possible you could get one of them. Maybe if the house is a smaller house and they decided to put some money in on a pool, but you're going to really have to prioritize what do you need versus what do you want? And that's that. I hope this video was helpful for you. Again, if you need help creating a budget or if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can uh, email me, text me, Facebook Messenger, whatever you need to do to contact me. And as always, if you're in the market to buy or sell a home, give us a call at RWB Realty Group. We would love to help you. Thank you.